So Pal World completely changed with its biggest new update yet. We have a first look at the boss fight and I'm going to show you how to also summon it. We have tons of cool new rewards and also special new items that you can unlock, including ones that can let you see your pal's IV stats, among many others. So lots of secret features, many cool changes. A lot of this was actually from the fan feedback. And let's get started. But let's get started with the boss fight because I was actually quite impressed how strong Bella Noir is, especially on the ultra difficulty. So her ultra variant has about 1 million HP and will absolutely wreck everything. I'm talking about completely raising your entire base and also running through like dozens of your strongest spells like they are nothing. So to get her to summon in the first place, you will need two items. One of them is going to be the summoning altar, which you can get by unlocking it via the ancient technologies tab right here on the right side. You will need, of course, those ancient points, but you should have plenty of them at this time. And second of all, you will need some of these special Bella Noir slabs. Four fragments in total are required to create one slab, which will actually let you summon the boss one time. So to get these fragments, the best source is going to be completing dungeons. The higher the level, the better it is. And it seems that the end chest rewards have a very good chance to drop at least one fragment. So it should take you no more than like five or six dungeons for at least four fragments or one boss summon. Once you got four of those fragments, you can head over at any crafting station, use the four of them to create a final bigger slab, and this is the one that you're going to use at the altar to summon Bella Noir. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind. One of them, you can only build altars within your base limits. So whichever base you place this in, make sure it's not one that is important. Maybe just place it in one that you can afford to lose because she will absolutely destroy almost every building inside of it. But this is also going to give you access to your pal deck so you can actually summon pretty much all of your pals against one of the toughest challenges in the entire game. Now I'm going to go over a full on strategy guide to beat her easier in a different video. In the meantime, let's check her rewards because she actually drops some amazing new items. One of them is going to be, of course, the huge dark egg, which once you hatch, of course, you will get Bella Noir as your very own companion. And she is actually very strong. She comes with the Siren of the Void. It's one of the best abilities actually in the game, gives you both dark and ice attack damage plus 20 percent so possibly this might be the best passive on top of the other passive of course if you're going with a full on dark even if it does lose on the ice damage but um she is amazing she also comes with some other amazing abilities like for example apocalypse which lets you generate several dark vortexes in a surrounding area pretty much the same attack that she uses to completely wipe your entire base out um, she also has this very special attack called Nightmare Stare, which is kind of like a wave attack that you're kind of used to, like, for example, Palladius also has a version of it, but this seems to be slightly stronger. And speaking of hatching eggs, eggs that you actually get can now have a chance to also spawn alphas. Yes, actually, that is now possible, and one of the first Bella Noirs I got from the first dark egg from the boss was actually an alpha so that's actually really awesome so the stats are going to be slightly better and maybe it's going to be slightly bigger but that was about it from what i was able to observe you also get a multi-climate undershirt plus two so this is going to give you a great resistance to both heat and cold which means you no longer have to actually equip two of those shirts at the same time you can actually just have one of them and free up an accessory slot which will come in handy for a very strong item we're gonna check in just a little bit besides this you also get some of these new um skill fruits that are consumable so what these do is that they essentially increase the iv stat ranges of your existing bells so let's say for example you went through a huge sort of breathing process but only later realized that the iv stats were actually pretty mediocre on your final result well these fruits will actually let you extend the damage the defense and also the hp range of the iv stats of that specific pal which means you no longer have to worry that much about perfect iv stats on the parents as you can just use these on the offsprings however keep in mind that it only seems that the boss can actually drop this so you only get it from the raid which means you're likely going to use this to push your well top tier pals to like 100 in all of the iv stats Another item that you can get is going to be the Ancient Civilization Core. In fact, the Bella boss fight is going to be one of the only ones that seem to give you these 
but they are going to be extremely important as you're going to need them for some of the brand new craftables so let's talk about them because they are actually massive of course you can see them in the ancient technologies tab and we're going to start things off with the ability glasses they do require five of those civilization cores but i recommend to go ahead and unlock these and craft them right away this means you will need to fight Belanoir about two or three times to get all five of them, depending on your luck. But this is going to actually be the item that lets you, you guessed it, see those IV stats, the hidden stats of every single pal that you have by simply checking them out in the open world or by simply inspecting them in the inventory screen. And as you can see, it actually gives you the stat ranges and if any of them is over 80% in those specific stat ranges like defense, attack or hp it will be highlighted with a green color so that it can better indicate that that's actually a very desirable individual pal to have either in the breeding process or to get with the best passive skills and this is going to absolutely change everything for you from this point on this is going to make it much easier for you to breed your best results and it actually surprised me just how many of my top picks which i thought were really good were actually mediocre at best so best check out your own see how they are with the glasses but this is going to be a must-have item from this point on another set of cool items that you're going to find a lot in the new update are the training and the technical manuals a lot of them drop from chests so you're definitely going to want to hunt for treasure chests even more this time around but they also drop from bell noir as well as many other bosses and also the dungeons but the training manuals are basically going to give you a ton of extra xp for your pals and these can range in quality from like blue all the way to legendary with legendary giving you like 20 30 levels at a time making the leveling process much easier for some of your alts you're going to definitely want these especially as you're going to be doing a lot more breeding this time around you will want to actually use the training manuals that you get from the open world or boss fights on your low level pals um, you can also use of course some of these new um, technology or technical manuals these will actually give you extra points that you can use into your technologies tab this both includes the ancient tech but also the regular tech and you're going to have to check out each individual item which one provides which type of point and speaking of boosting up your pals, one of the best changes right now is that you can now raise your pals ranked the maximum with a single synthesis using the pal essence condenser. So condensation progress is now actually accumulated in each individual pal. And if you go ahead and check out your pals, let's say for example you had one that had like three stars or four stars. Well, you can actually transfer all of those three or four stars or however many condensations you had within that pal in any other pal that, for example, might not have any ranks at all. Let's say, for example, you had a previous max rank pal that had very bad IVs, but now you got a very strong one with good IVs but no ranks. So you no longer have to get like 120 plus pals, you can just transfer and condensate the previously maxed out pal into this one and it will transfer all of that rank up and condensation progress to it. This is one of the best changes actually and a massive one that the community wanted since day one, so I'm super glad that they actually implemented that. Another massive change is to the monitoring stand and this is now what you're going to use to allow or disallow certain work to be done by your base spells. So let's say for example you want Anubis to only do mining, you can just let that checked out but then uncheck everything else like transportation and fighting and all of that. So this is going to give you so much control over everything, especially for example in my case I only want Blazimut to do mining, I don't want it to do any kindling, I'm going to use Jormuntide Ignis for that. So I'm going to completely uncheck anything that does that on Blazimut and only leave your Montite Ignis to handle that. And the same goes for anything else like Lyleen, you can just keep her for seeding and maybe like doing a bit of planting and then have somebody else do of course some of the other chores like maybe let Anubis or a different Anubis to do the transportation. You can even have individual pals do whatever job you want to within the ones that they have available in their skill set. Another similar quality of life change is of course to the items you can place inside of inventories and stashes because you can now check which type of item you can place inside different types of containers from weapons, accessories, food, ingredients and so on. 
So for example, you can make dedicated ones in which you only place weapons or accessories or only food, ammo or stones. So let me give you an example that I used. I went ahead and actually crafted two of these feeding stations. One I set to ingredients so that my pals only place ingredients inside of it. And the second one I only set for food so that this is the one that actually is used for them to feed and not consume any of my ingredients. That is actually a very good way to not overlap any of these and still craft the cakes and all the other stuff that I want. In addition to this, both Kelpsy and Dumas become a lot more important for your base. Kelpsy can now be used to produce spell fluids at the ranch. This is going to be extremely useful early on. And Dumas you can use to now get high quality pal oil. Well, I never actually had any trouble farming that, however, now you can just get it at your leisure from your base and then funnel that into polymer or whatever other high-end gear and items you want for your base. That's actually a very good change right there. There are some others, of course, including the fact that you can now reduce the weight of metal ore while riding Serpent Terra. You can also increase the amount of ore dropped while riding Astagon. As if it wasn't enough that he was the best at collecting mineral resources, it seems that he's going to be even better this time around. There are a couple of other cool items that you can unlock via the Ancients tab, so one of them is going to be the Antique Dresser. Yes, you can now completely change the appearance of your character. Pretty much the entire character creation is going to be available to you right there, so you can change the body, whatever color you want, and also the skin, hair, and everything else in between. So it's pretty nice, and it's very inexpensive to build, and there is also no limit on it whatsoever. Technically speaking, we have two more items you can unlock. One of them is the Homeward Thundercloud. So this is going to be your sort of instant teleportation when you don't have access to a nearby teleportation point. So this will actually teleport you to the closest nearby base. You can't use it in dungeons, however, and other similar locations. So do keep that in mind. And the second one is this electronic egg incubator, which has the advantage of automatically adjusting to the perfect temperature for whichever egg you place inside so you don't have to worry about the environments or putting anything close to it to make it heated it will do all of that for you automatically we also have of course the ore mining site one and two the only difference i can see between them is just the size and how cool the second one looks but essentially this is going to give you the possibility to just farm ore even in bases that don't get access to ore nodes like for example some of the bases in the early part of the map don't have as much ore so you can probably scrap your ore base and kind of just have this in your primary one that might also be a better solution since you're going to want to now dedicate one of your bases to just summoning the raid boss and attacking it What's amazing about this is that there's also a change that lets your pals to actually transport all of these results back to any container. In fact, it doesn't just work to transport these ores from the mine to your container. It also lets any crafting items to be transported from their crafting facilities. Like, for example, if you crafted a bunch of rockets at any of those conveyor belts, you can actually have them transported back to any of your stashes. And it's going to be helpful, especially on these uh, ore mines, as you no longer have to transport almost 10,000 ore once it's done on your own. They have also continued fixing the PAL assignments, so any fixed assignments that, well, for example, PALs had before a bad event happened, like for example, the base got attacked, or maybe um, they went through um, a ton of damage. Yeah, these assignments will not change due to these conditions. Now they will actually remain fixed unless the PAL is placed inside of the PAL box. So as long as they remain in the world, they will not change their assignments. And another one is that you can actually now force a pal to work and cancel their break by picking them up and then throwing them towards a facility. But keep in mind that this is going to uh, take down some of their sanity and eventually make them suffer. We also have some balance changes, which mostly translate to some pretty significant nerfs. One of them is to the attack power multiplier of partner skills when riding creatures. Previously, this was a 2.0 or basically a double damage. Now that has been reduced to 1.2 pretty much all across the board. So one of the best examples when riding for Stallion, you would get a 2 times damage multiplier and your damage sources would turn to Frost. Well, now that's only going to be a 1.2x. So that's basically a 20% increase only. The same goes for some of the HP values of various legendary pals. They actually fix the issue where the difference in HP between the captured legendary pal and the bred legendary pal 
was too large. And again, Frostalian was the biggest example. By default, the captured legendary pal used to have like 14k HP with no upgrades. And the bread one had like only 5k. So now they should be closer, which is the lower variant. So like 5k on both of them. Not sure if this changes for the one we fight in the open world, but it is actually a pretty decent change. And there's many others in there too. You can, of course, also see them by using the links down below or checking out the Steam page of the patch notes. There are actually quite a lot of changes in there for you to check out. And it's not only this, we're actually going to get some really big changes and content updates this summer in 2024. So this includes never before seen scenery and thrilling adventures on a new island, home to many new pals. In addition, we plan to add a large amount of new content, including new buildings, weapons, and tower bosses. So it's likely going to be that large island with a huge tree up north, which is something that I can't wait to see more of. But this is pretty much it with the update. Let me know down below if there's anything secret that you found inside of it. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.